mind can be employed without the thinking. The greater 3, 3, 16 without any notice of widening up. And ideas become 13R210 general by separating from them the circumstances of time, and place, and any other ideas that may determine them to this or that particular existence. Here, for law, the operations of the mind originate from ideas, determined, to particular existence. This is a fundamental principle with law. It is a casual concession to the habits of language with Hume, and it is a fundamental principle of the philosophy of organism. In an earlier section 2, 23, one law expresses more vaguely the same doctrine, though in this context he immediately waters it down into an unexplained notion of going. Constantly together, the mind, being, furnishes a great number of the simple ideas conveyed by the senses as they are found in X. Superior things, take Thank <laughs> you. 
itself in another actual existence, so that is the analysis of the latter existence component, determined it, the former existence is discoverable. The philosophy of organism expresses this principle by its doctrines of prehension and of objectification. Locke always supposes that consciousness is consciousness of the ideas in the conscious mind. But he never separates the ideas from the consciousness. The philosophy of organism makes this separation, and thereby relegates consciousness to a subordinate metaphysical position, and gives the Locke's a metaphysical interpretation which was not in Locke's mind. This separation asserts Kant's principle, Gedenkenona in Hobbes and Weir, and Schauingenona Bruce and Klein. Sixteen with Kant's principle is here applied in exactly the converse way to Kant's own use of it.
his historical and sociological writings and for his dialogues concerning natural religion. Narrative use examples that the process described was within 17 italics lines. 
but there is another ineradicable difference between comprehension, namely, there. 142. Discussions and Applications of prehending subjects, when the two prehensions are in that respect diverse. simplicity can be identified with priority in the concrescent process. Locke, in his first two books, he attempts to build up experience from the basic elements of simple ideas of sensation. 
These simple ideas are practically Santayana's intuitions of essences. Santayana explicitly, 117J repudiates the misconception, but in so doing he knocks away one of the supports of his doctrine. A fourth reason for the rejection of the doctrine is that the way is thereby open for a rational scheme of cosmology in which a final reality is identified with acts of experience. Chapter B from Descartes to Kant. Section I. 218 J. A. Comparison of set different ways in which Descartes and Locke respectively conceive the scope of their investigations at once discloses the very important shift which Locke introduced into the tradition of philosophic thought. Descartes asks the fundamental metaphysical question, what is it to be an actual entity? He found three kinds of actual entities, namely, cogitating minds, extended bodies, and God. His word for an actual entity was, substance. The fundamental proposition, whereby the analysis of actuality could be achieved, took the form of predicating the quality of the substance in question. A quality was either an accident or an essential attribute. In the Cartesian philosophy there was room for three distinct kinds of change. One was the change of accidents of an enduring substance, another was the origination of an individual substance, and the third was the cessation of the existence of an enduring substance. Any individual belonging to either of the first two kinds of substances did not require any other individual of either of these kinds in order to exist. But it did require the concurrence of God. Thus the essential attributes of a mind were its dependence on God and its cogitation, and the essential attributes of a body were its dependence on God and its extension. Descartes does not apply the term, attribute, to the dependence on God, but it is an essential element in his philosophy. It is quite obvious that the accidental relationships between diverse individual substances form a great difficulty for Descartes. If they are to be included in his scheme of the actual 219 world, they must be qualities of a substance. Thus a relationship is the correlation of a pair of qualities, one belonging exclusively to one individual, and the other exclusively to the other individual. The correlation itself must be referred to God as one of his accidental qualities. Exactly the character in his theory of representative ideas. In this theory, the perceived individual has one quality, the perceiving individual has another quality, which is the idea representing this quality. God is aware of the correlation, and the perceiver's knowledge of God guarantees for him the veracity of his idea. It is unnecessary to criticize this very artificial account of what common sense believes to be our direct knowledge of other actual entities. But it is the only account consistent with the metaphysical materials provided by Descartes, combined with the assumption of a multiplicity of actual entities. In this assumption of us, 144, from Descartes to Kant, 145 multiplicity of actual entities, the philosophy of organism follows Descartes. It is, however, t obvious that there are only two ways out of Descartes. Difficulty, one way is to have recourse to some form of monism, the other way is to construct Descartes' metaphysical machinery. Descartes asserts one principle, which is the basis of all 
philosophy. He holds that the whole pyramid of knowing is based upon the immediate operation of knowing which is either an essential for Descartes or a contributory element in the composition of an immediate actual entity. This is also a first principle for the philosophy of organism. The Descartes allowed the subject predicate form of proposition, and the philosophical tradition derived from it, to dictate his subsequent metaphysical development. For his philosophy, actuality is meant to be a substance with entering qualities. For the philosophy of organism, the percipient occasion is its own standard of actuality. If in this knowledge other actual entities appear, it can only be because they conform to the standard of actuality. There can only be 220 evidence of the world of actual entities, if the immediate actual entity discloses them as essential to its own composition. A part, notion of an unessential experience of the external world is entirely alien to organic philosophy. This is the root point of divergence, and is the reason why the organic philosophy has to abandon any approach to the substance quality notion of actuality. The organic philosophy interprets experience as meaning the self and suffice to my present purpose, to consider the discerning faculties of a man as they are Freud about the objects that they have to do with. One, the enduring importance of lost work comes from the candor, clarity, and adequacy with which he stated the evidence, uninfluenced by the bias of metaphysical theory. He explained, in the sense of stating plainly, and not in the more usual sense of explaining away. By an ironic development in the history of thought, lost successors, who arrogated to themselves the title of empiricists, have been chiefly employed in explaining away the obvious facts of experience in obedience to the a priori doctrine of sensationalism inherited from the Bayesian philosophy which one can say, I, I, metaphysical construction by